Hello everybody, welcome back to the Educator Call Snap channel. How you doing? So today we have a pretty quick one for you guys. The Second Dinner released their update, I guess patch update. Usually these have a lot more information for the future, so should be good, but let's go through the changes and see if there are any low-key nerfs, which is what I'm looking for. All right, so starting off, right? Uh, first thing I wanted to mention is that there are no low-key nerfs in this, which is not too surprising, right? It's still like right after a season pass has come out, but I would have loved to see some changes, like just some power nerfs to Loki, maybe Loki being like a 3-4 or 3-3. Three, three. Uh, obviously, think, obviously think Loki's still really, really strong, really, really good. Obviously, but there are other... um good things in the meta especially with the new season coming out more cards being added the meta is going to change but still think loki is really really good for what it does so that's something i want to mention but let's look at the actual changes there's not too much in my opinion changes for this one there are five changes but like some of them are tied together so it feels a lot smaller than it is and and else first one of course is not even really a big change it's a small buff to mojo so mojo is now changing from having to have four cards on both sides to if both sides here are full plus six power this is a pretty important buff in space stone i would say that's the biggest deal where you can just put this in space stone if your opponent plays something in it you're you have a two eight essentially versus whatever your opponent's going to do right like that's actually really good so i would say like mostly it's a buff but not in a lot of circumstances where it matters so this is something that you can take advantage of people are playing junk anyways so this is something you could do play mojo and space stone on two play like debris on three right and you pretty much win that lane since it's going to be really hard to play something for three power that can contest a mojo so uh small buff to mojo i think this is like Thinking about Mojo with Annihilus coming out and, and some of the other interesting junk synergy cards. So, um, not a big deal. I, if you're playing Mojo, this feels a little bit better. If you're not, like, you don't really care. So, not the most, um, not a change we're going to dive deep about. This isn't that that important. So, this is just a minor consistency adjustment bringing Mojo in line with Dazzler, the way she cares about full locations for the versus a specific number of cards of the location we're kind of exploring where and how to draw a line uh so just even even second it doesn't have much to add here <laughs> <laughs> next up is an interesting one Uta is getting an adjustment i wouldn't necessarily call it a buff or a nerf but more of an adjustment where at the start of the game it shows the right location to you so um Instead of now you needing to draw this card, now you don't have to draw this card anymore. You just always get shown the right location. So that's something pretty interesting. Um, do I think this is going to make it see play? Maybe more play, and you could definitely spread it in Kazar and stuff like that. And and, and twenty five percent of the games, like this is just a free buff, right? Like you're not going to draw the card a, at all. So um, there are some scenarios where it's just free value. But, like, it is losing a nerf. It is losing some power, right? It's losing a power to give you that benefit. So, it's it's interesting. I don't know if it's... um. I mean, it, it, it opens the door for some more new strategies. Maybe Quake sees more play with this. No, it's not. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's an interesting change meaningful i think it will change how you look at the card i just don't know if it's going to be like oh we're gonna this is now in a meta deck because you can see the right location and that's really important in some circumstances which are they are but in a lot of cases it doesn't do anything right and, and you are you have to play this card in your deck to have that benefit so overall like i'm not sold on it i think it's it's a right direction but it's just like like you are you are paying a price for it uh, with with a one one that versus some of the other like one ones spider ham you know got nerfed right and stuff like that but yeah so interesting interesting card change just don't know if it's gonna see more play because of it 
the combination of Uther's effect being significantly very early in the game, but also depending on drawing him, has left this card in a tough spot. So no one's playing him. We decided to start adjusting him by smearing a remedy that functions regardless whether you draw him or not. We have some particular philosophies around this space as it disrupts some of the attention we value in locations. We're not looking to make Uther a staple of Series 1 2 play. So basically, this card sees play in series one or two because it's early and you can play him in Kazar, but they don't want this to be like so good that you always play him in your in in series one series two so they're thinking okay it's fine but let's not um buff him too hard so that he sees play permanently in the early game so that's fair and i agree like this isn't going to make him see permanent play or anything like that this is definitely an overly safe adjustment yeah yeah i agree with that yeah, like it's hard to like you are it's it's you are losing power um to do this and we may return to our card again based to see how it goes so if, if it doesn't do well which is very possible they might adjust it back so not a not a crazy change. I don't think this affects the metagame at all, right? Like these first two changes haven't affected the metagame at all. Now we have some changes that may affect the metagame. We have um, Mantis, Cable, and Maria Hill getting some power adjustments. Uh, and Maria Hill also getting a skill change. But Mantis going from a 1-2 to a 2-3. This card doesn't see too much play. I sometimes see it in my opponents. I'm always wondering why. But I sometimes see it. Um, if your opponent played a card here this turn, draw a card from your deck. Like, the ability is, is good. It's just sometimes hard to guarantee. But maybe it's going to be a lot, uh, a little bit easier on turn two. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good ability. It's just sometimes, you know, it's hard to guarantee the ability to go off, right? But a 2-3 is a good stat line. So at least even if you, you whiff, it's not the end of the world, so... I can see this seeing more play now, actually, with the change. I can actually see it see, see more play. Funny enough. Next up, we have Cable. This one, I think, is the most interesting. Well, that's not true. I, I actually think Maria Hill is the most interesting. But this one, I, I, I'm a, I like Cable's ability. Draw the top card of your opponent's deck. And making it from a 2-2 to a 3-4 is actually meaningful. 2-2 two, two was hard to justify sometimes because you're just, it's a stat loss, right? Like, you, you essentially, you're, you're getting a big stat loss to do this. Um, here, now, you know, a 3-4 isn't as much of a stat loss. And, and drawing from your opponent's deck is a big, is, like, very important. Because if you draw, like, a key piece, like, that can really give you confidence to snap give you confidence to like go through the rest of the game the only downside here is it is arguably better to know your like your opponent's card earlier since um that can really like early on that can really flip the game and and how confident you are so you do get the information later but it's probably fairer to get it later than than earlier so and the the status cool Obviously, people are thinking about Surfer with this, and I think that's fair. Surfer is now cable ready, so or cable is now surfer ready. So that's always something to think about. But overall, like this one is is a very interesting one to me in terms of like I might try this in different decks and see how it just feels as a like a as a generic card to add. Uh so yeah. Th this one this one I'm I'm the most personally excited about, but I could see um why maria hill might be more exciting so for me for maria hill uh you are losing the ability to get a one drop but you're always getting a two drop and now it's a one drop itself so essentially this is now the new like it's not replacing snow guard in essence right because snow guard what you would do you just play snow guard on one and then the two three or or, or something on two but they they um they nerf Snow Guard, so now Marie Hill's kind of getting that same treatment. The downside of this is it's a random two cost card, so you don't have the consistency anymore. But you do get a one drop and a two drop with this card, and that was just a really powerful effect to have uh, with Snow Guard. So I could definitely see this seeing more play, um, like maybe over Agent 13, in that, hey, you play this, and now you have a two cost card to play on your next turn. It's a little bit safer, and things like that. So I could definitely see Maria Hill being 
played in significantly more decks. So this this one I think might actually see a lot more play um, with the changes compared to the old one. Because the old one, like, Mirage was better than Maria Hill. Sentinel was better than Maria Hill. There was just a lot of, like, good twos. Cava was better, in my opinion, than Maria Hill. So there was, like, no reason. Like, there was too many cards that you'd rather play over Maria Hill. So it just did, like, it, it fit, like, a weird spot where there was already, like, 10 cards that did the same job or better, especially with Snowguard coming in as well. Like, why would you ever, ever pick this card? So now I think it has more of a, a play niche where it's like, oh, do you want a one drop that gives you a two? Here you go. So... I'm fine with this one. Cable the one the most interesting to me, but let's see what they have to say about these changes. So these suggestions are all related to Grove them as a group. These three cards along with Agent 13, Sentinel, Snow Guard, Mirage, right? There's more. Make up a, a cadre of characters that all add a card to your hand for a cheap cost under different circumstances. You know, like, yeah, I mean, there's Agent Coulson, right? Like, there's even more, if you, since we added a three-cost card, like, there's even more. However, they all, they're also all overlapping one another a fair bit, existing in a tight range of cost and power combinations. True. We'd like to break that up a little bit to build in some differentiation as to how they use and where they might be played. It's unlikely this is the last tweak to this group we'll make, but it should get the ball rolling and let us see more clearly how the live game values what each card is uniquely capable of bringing. So they probably tested some of these changes in their like their play test group, but they don't know exactly how it's going to transfer to the live game. So very fair. The I mean, this is all fine and dandy. Where's my Loki nerf, right? Like that's my <laughs> takeaway. Eliath as well. I could see Eliath. Um honestly I'm I'm fine with Eliath the way it is. Mostly like, mostly, like, obviously, if you lose to a lie, it's pretty frustrating because there's, like, no counterplay to it. In the right scenarios, there's no, there's, you auto win, right? So that's, like, the one issue I have with the card. But uh, what it does to the meta, I'm kind of okay with in, in, in essence. Like, maybe you'll need some adjustments. But for now, like, I'm, I'm generally fine with it. Uh, but Loki, Loki, I think could use some power nerfs on the card itself. Like it's a three five. It's so good. Like three five means like you have a drawback, right? Like, like quote unquote a drawback to your ability. But there's no drawback. You get a huge benefit. Um, so it doesn't the stat line doesn't make too much sense to me. But in terms of these cards in particular, I think it, they make sense. Mantis is the only one where I'm like maybe. People that liked Old Mantis won't be as happy with this one, but generally I think it's fine to experiment because all of these cards saw lowish play. I would say Cable saw the most play, but Maria and Mantis didn't really see that much play. So it's fine to adjust, just make sure we're not forgetting some of the other like power picks as well as the new season pass. Definitely we'll be discussing more about the new season pass and hopefully this patch will also come with lots of new things to talk about so um not the biggest patch in in essence and i i don't think mojo and uta matter that much it's really just the i guess maria hill and cable so not the biggest this isn't really changing the meta this is really going to keep whatever the old meta is still the same what are your thoughts on these changes these are pretty small pretty insignificant but we've had a decent amount of like bigger changes in my opinion so let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next one take care educated calling to snap once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you tomorrow snap your skills will be